You know, it's my first time doing this, so I don't even have an intro. Yeah, first time. Okay. Yeah, my, my intro for my podcast is like, yo, this is Bodega, the professional bullshitter. Mm-hmm. But I think I need to come up with a, a new intro for this. All right, do it right now on the spot. On the okay. spot? Here we go. Yo, this is Bodega. I'm here sitting down with my friends. We're going to have a couple of drinks. Kick it back, have a little vibe. I hope you enjoyed the convo. How was that? It was relaxed. Relaxed? It was relaxed. <laughs> I, I, I tried. <laughs> but it was cool. It was calm. It was yeah, calm. Cal- I, it was calm. Think, I'm a professional. I've been doing this for from some from, from some years now. Okay. You, you, you can't tell. As but you should. Introduce the people. Tell you who you are, what you do. Oh, well, I'm Tati Dozier. Um, I'm a singer, rapper, actor, dancer, songwriter. Um, what else? I don't know. I do everything. Do everything. Art related, yeah. You paint? Yeah. I don't actually. I lied. No. <laughs> not you not everything. not not paint. I don't paint or draw, but everything else. Dance? You said dance? I do. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, what what is your your main? Which is are those arts that you name? Which is your main focus? My main focus right now yes. is singing, rapping, m- music. It's, it's music right now. Music. Yeah. So, are you a rapper first or a singer first? I'm a singer first. Yo, really. I'm a singer first, yeah. Oh, wow, because I would consider you a rapper first from what I've seen. What you've seen and what you heard, yes. Yes. Definitely, because I, well, I've been singing, I've been singing my whole life, but um, when I was in college, I was like, you know what, I need to focus on rap, because if I'm saying I'm doing it both, I don't want people to hear me rap and be like, okay, this is just mediocre, yeah. you know, he playing around with this, um, so I, I did focus on rap. Yeah. Heavily um, for like my first few projects. Yes. Um, How many projects was? Is so a few? I have I have two mixtapes and I released a EP, The New Boy in Town. When was that? When when, you, when did you release The New Boy? Uh, March. So March March, March twenty twenty one. So a couple months ago. Okay, congratulations. A few months ago. How thank, was it putting it out? Oh, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Um, it must have been a relief when you just, when you hit upload. I definitely was crying. You um, crying? I, I did. I yeah, that's, I that's cried. Cheer, cheer. Oh, let that's, me let me pour. I pour you already. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'm a gracious host. I said that funny, but <laughs> hey, all right. I definitely didn't finish that. Yeah, I know, but it's okay. I don't judge. That whiskey is strong. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, for some reason, it's it'd it be the cheapest whiskey that's the strongest. Like just pure alcohol. Because it hit ga- you, it kick yeah, you right in the chest, right? It kick you. Mm-hmm. That expensive whiskey. Oh, yeah. it's just nothing, nothing, nothing. Yeah. Hour mass later, move. It tastes expensive, and yeah. it just be light. Which is your favorite? Do you have a, a whiskey that you put, like your favorite? If you had to name one, I don't. I'm real hood with it. It's, you be like the it's, Hennessy. It's <laughs> you be the Hennessy. That Hennessy. They black? got the Hennessy. Oh my god. <laughs> the the Hennessy, the Duce. Um, act, well, truthfully though, my favorite drink yeah. is Bacardi Gold. Okay. Um, I love Bacardi top Gold. Top shelf boy, right? But here. like, if I'm going out, yeah, and you know, it's shots, it's it's Hennessy or yeah. Douce, always, and Hennessy and Douce. always, always. It's my my favorite one is my favorite whiskey to drink is mm-hmm. Maker's Mark. Okay, I like no, I like that too. Yeah, it's real smooth, and it's mm-hmm. like I like Maker's Mark because a lot of people don't talk about it in the black community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But when I go out, I don't know any, the names of any drinks. Yeah. So I just be Hennessy and Cranberry. <laughs> I got Hennessy and Cranberry? Oh, yeah, okay. Hennessy and Cranberry. I don't even like it that much, but that's the only drink I know. Like, <laughs> Yeah, when I when I drink Duce and Hennessy, I don't like to mix it. I just, it's shot. People who drink Duce straight. and Hennessy? Yes. Are they trying to fuck? Not together. I'm just saying, oh, okay. like, when I. Oh, <laughs> okay. Not, not together. That's what I heard. Not together. <sighs> when you, I'm just saying, when they drink. Hennessy and Duce. Oh, like in dr- general. Okay, okay. Yeah, you said tr- mix. I was nah, like, not not the mix, not the mix. That was tr- well. Crazy. I mean, I've I've done that before, but that that was you 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 trying to have a wild night. Nah, it just was. It was out. <laughs> we was outside. So how how was it? Like I know you had an album release party. Uh-huh. How was it? It was amazing. It, is it? Um, was that your first? Yes, yeah, my it was my first time. Like celebrating a mm-hmm. release, um, I didn't really celebrate when I when I dropped my 
two mixtapes. What are the names of those two mixtapes for the people? Um, Car Blanche Car Volume Blanche. One and Car Blanche Volume Two. Those are mainly R and B. No, I'm rapping. You're like, rapping. I'm complete. Uh, Car Blanche Volume One. I'm is literally only rap. Like wow. I'm rapping on every song. Um, and that goes back to what I was saying before. You know about wanting to focus on you know rapping and getting my my skills up and you know my pen and all that type of stuff. Yeah. So I was I was definitely rapping on every song, um, and I think I only sang on like two, maybe three songs on the second mm. pr- on the second mixtape. So yeah, I was just focused on hip hop. It was really just yeah. hip hop for me. That's so strange that you said you consider yourself or you put R and B singing first. We'll I'm a, well, I think of myself as a singer first because yeah. I've been singing my whole life. Like my dad's a singer, my yeah. mom's a singer. You come from a musical family. I, I come from a, a huge musical family, so that's singing is what I know and what I grew up uh, what, surrounded by. What music do they? What music do they sing slash player? So both. Well, my my dad started out R and B. My mom was R and B as well. Okay. My dad retired from R and B because he's also a producer, songwriter himself. Oh, wow. So he retired from R&B due to the church um, and their thoughts on, you know, secular music and oh, all that type of stuff. okay. So he retired and then he came back and now he's doing gospel music. Go- is it just straight gospel, gospel R&B? No, he, he's, he's doing like straight gospel music, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he has albums out. Oh wow! Like, well, he's always had albums out, but yeah, yeah. now it's just like gospel albums. Oh, okay, yeah. What do, what, what do the parents think of your music when they listen to it? Do so my you? dad, my dad actually um, produced my first mixtape. Oh wow! Like he made so, all the beats and like executive producer. No, and everything? no, no. He didn't. He didn't make the beats. He just like he was the engineer. So like Copy. he he just engineered. He mixed and mastered everything. Oh, that's dope. Um, that was very. Interesting. Oh, why would you I say, that? say that? Because I'm not doing gospel. Yeah. <laughs> so at, the, at this so time, was he, he doing gospel at this time? Oh yes, that was only a few years ago. So okay, yeah, okay. he he was definitely. So, um, so when you started doing music, he yeah. went he 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 went back to doing, or he was doing because you said sorry. he. So at the period that he retired from music, yeah. Um, I was writing songs and stuff like that, but I wasn't recording. Okay. So when oh, I did Mike, my a closer, when I did my first um mixtape, yeah, that was like the first time that I was really in a studio. You know, headphones on. We we in the studio recording. Like that was like one of my first times recording that first mixtape. Yeah, and it was with my dad. Was it a real close bonding experience? It was. It definitely was, but when I say it was interesting, I mean it because like because of my sexuality and some of the topics yeah. and things that I was saying, it definitely took him off guard yeah. with a lot of the stuff that was coming out of my mouth. Yeah. Um, but it, it definitely was a bonding experience. Um, he also um, engineered some of the records on the second project too. Mm. Um, Wait, so was it that the first time him hearing about that? About your sexual orientation, or he oh, knew already? No, 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 no. He he knew already. He just didn't know to what extent <laughs> yeah, I yeah. was about to, like where I was about to go. Copy when I when it came to the music. Like he didn't know what I was about yeah. to say. He was mixing the vocals in one day. You're whoa, <laughs> and, and especially because I was I wasn't singing on the first project. Mm. I was just rapping. Yeah, so it was like, bit more like something. It was just he was just like. You this was like this what we doing? <laughs> like okay, this what we doing? And I was like, well, and, <laughs> and so he was just like, okay. okay, but I have, but I have a cool, I have a cool dad though, because he he just like you know whatever whatever you want, I got you, you know whatever you want, I got yeah. you. That was real cool that you guys still kept that a close relationship mm-hmm. during that because a lot of family members it doesn't go like that. But mm-hmm. it was really cool uh, that your pro- dad did he help you or anything on your on your uh, EP? Actually, yes, he did. So I had sent him um, the whole EP, um, and he was uh, mixing, mastering some stuff, and then I had somebody else. I I wanted a lot more ears on it. Yeah. Um, then you know how I was handling the mixtapes because I really wanted it to sound right, yeah. and it's my first EP, so it's official. Um, 
The mixtapes are not on any platform. Like they're so. on SoundCloud. They're on SoundCloud. Yeah. On, so it was just me jumping over other people's beats. Oh, so it's pretty oh, much. So this is an actual mixtape. It's a mixtape, mixtape. Yeah, not, yeah. you know. Yeah, these like Section 80 all by streaming Kendrick. platforms. Yeah, mixtape. Yeah, yeah. Like, nah, those yeah, are perfect, projects. Those perfectly are perfectly mixed albums with yeah. original beats. I'm like, what the fuck is this not a mixtape? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I was, I was jumping over beats. What's some um, of the beats that you jumped over? I jumped over Kanye's. Um, Which Kanye beat? You gotta pick the right Kanye. Um. Jesus Walks. Uh, I yeah. did Jesus Walks. But that was a, like a Black Lives Matter moment for me because I was in college. So that was like a whole Black Lives Matter um, situation. And um, I jumped over a Nikki B. I jumped over a Destiny's Child B. Oh, wow. I jumped over a Azalea Banks B. Azalea Banks, she's a. a Lord, I did a Lord remix um, to Royal. What happened Remember to her? she what, dropped. What happened to her? I don't. I don't know. I actually, I heard that she's about to drop another album. Do we care? But I don't. I don't think yeah, so. We don't care. <laughs> oh, don't. some people care. Some but. people care. I'm sorry. She dropped. She dropped the project. Everybody's going crazy for her. They went crazy. And then the memes about her looking creepy came out. And then. Yeah, she was looking crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about she specifically. Was, like she was looking crazy. The, but she's a pretty girl. She's a very attractive. Is she? But, wow. Let me shut up. Wow. You didn't see those the, the music videos? The she, she looked pretty. She, but when you see her at the award show, no, why she, she don't look? Like she don't look. It's either it's catfish out here. If, what makeup but, artists can do? What I'm saying though. I'm That'd saying. If we see a girl thinks it's that way, then you take her back home. But wait, I thought I thought you look like you just take off your makeup, you gain five pounds. But she's a, but she's an incredible artist though, yeah. and that's actually my one of my favorite songs. Which one? Um, the remix that I did, the Lord remix that I did. What song? Royals. Okay, Royals. Yeah, which was like the song that like broke that her. You know, yeah, it out. was. Yeah, yeah. But I I loved that song though. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I jumped on it. And then, going back to the other question, though, I jumped on a B.O.B. record. What happened to him? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he's independent, so he's probably making more money, but... He probably is. Yeah. He probably is. Um, I can't remember who else. Rec- uh, oh, wait. Um, I jumped on... Um, it Takes Two to Make a Thing Go Right. I jumped on that record too. <laughs> I learned that this this past year it takes two to make a thing go right. You can put as much effort as you want. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna be quiet. I'm weak. <laughs> but no, I, I did that <laughs> record too. So actually, if you listen to the first mixtape from the first song to the last, it goes in order of like the timeline of music. So I started from oh, the old yeah. 80s record and then we came current, and mm-hmm. I dropped, I dropped that Who, in twenty. Did your parents influence the the older? No, it it was something that I, it was something that I wanted to do. Going back again to me really trying to, you know, work on my pen and yeah. work on my craft yeah. as a, a writer. I was like, no, I want people to listen to it and be like, he knows hip hop, he knows. Music, like he knows what he's doing, so I I did that on purpose. What are your What are your favorite like five top? Let's do your five top hip hop rap rappers. Then let's do your five top artists. Rappers, Busta Rhymes. Are you Are you naming them like your favorite to least, or just no order? Nah, nah, no order, no order. Just um, Busta Rhymes, Nicki Minaj, mm-hmm. of course, um, Missy Elliott. Um, Lauren Hill, and I, I don't really have a fifth, yeah. but somebody that I listen to very heavily mm-hmm. um, is Biggie. Biggie? You know what's funny? I was in high school listening to Biggie like OD, right. OD. When you name like um, Nicki Minaj, uh, Busta Rhymes, and uh, what's the other one? Missy Elliott. Missy Elliott. I, I can hear the influence. All three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All when you three. You said all three. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can all hear three. It. I can hear all it. three. Yeah, all yeah. three. I can hear the cadences, mm-hmm. the the um, larger than life personality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can hear it. Yeah. Oh. When you listen to the New Boy in Town, the yeah. EP, you you can hear it. it. It's it's very blatant on specific the songs. Specific songs. Like it's it's very blatant. Those so what, three. What. What do you think of them, how they how they're doing right now? 
those top those three because the other well, Biggie's not around, of course, and Miss Elias doesn't really uh she's not really uh in the, in the spotlight like that. But mm-hmm. you know, Biggie, uh, Nicki Minaj, Biggie, Busta Rhymes, uh, Lauren Hill, not Lauren Hill, uh, Nicki, and um, damn it, the name you just said it. Um, I said Busta Rhymes. Busta, Nicki, and uh, Missy. Yeah, they're still. So, what, what, what do you think of them right now, career wise? I think that Nicki is still riding her wave. You think I, so? I I do. In a in a in a uh, a weird in a weird way she is. What do you think of her the comparisons she gets between her and Little Kim? And do you think they should do a versus? I don't. Mm. I I don't think Why? that they should do a versus. I don't think it makes sense. I feel like we need a a Kim Foxy versus because the time mm. the time period makes sense. Y'all trying to compare Nikki to Kim? If you feel like that reasoning is valid, that's fine. However. It's two different time periods. What we gonna hear? Um, like, but, is Nicki gonna play "Jump Off"? But her Foxy, remix of "Jump Off" and to Kim's original, like, but, it, it, it's two different times. But like, why would you do Foxy with Kim with uh, with Nicki then? Because that's also two, that's during Jay's it, but it's, first it's, run. But it's still that's two different times. Yeah, but versus- Nicki Nicki first project project came out in two thousand and seven. Yeah. You talking about women that was out nine ninety five ninety six? But the the, ju- the music is compared a lot because very similar. It, but how and content? Yeah, of course. But you could. That's like saying Little Kim should do a versus with Cardi. No, but you know what it is. I, I, guess, I guess people. That's are, two generations when, later. When you think of Little Kim, they think of her music being more lyrical than Cardi. That's why they would put her up with Nicki. No, put her with Foxy. And I also think they also no. Never mind. I ain't, no, gonna, just I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say that. I ain't gonna say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So nah. It's more YouTube channel. Don't worry. Nah. <laughs> Don't worry. Say it. Nah. If you're not gonna say it, I was just, I, I was just gonna say like, no shade to Kim, but Foxy was out rapping her in that era. So if you say well, lyrical, well, lyrical content, Foxy was spitting I, I, I gotta for you. Brooklyn. You, you down. mean you mean Jay was out rapping? Bits. Nah, first time, first time. Because Jay was. I mean, not first time, first Fox, album. Little. Foxy, Foxy, first album she wasn't writing. But Jay was. She, of course, after that she said I pinned everything after that. I don't know, man. Sorcerer says otherwise. Sorcerer says her her. Uh, but Jay, her is, but Jay's not. Don't. But Jay's not writing nothing for Foxy now. And but is Foxy putting out music currently? She put out a. She has a verse on um, Nas's latest project. No, she does. She latest does. Project, which is and it was critically acclaimed. Everybody loved Foxy's verse. She bodied that. What, what, what's, what's the name of it? It's not of his album. It's it's the one that came after the one with Kanye. It just came. It just came out. Like just came out. It just came Where out like been? 2021 or 20, the end of King is Dead or King's Disease? One of them. I don't remember the name. I think it's King's Disease you're talking about. But it, it just came out like 2020. It was during the pandemic. Yeah, so I remember. Been, uh, yeah, it's King's yeah, Disease. It wasn't that um, Kanye seven song. What do you think about that whole Kanye <laughs> run with the, with the artist and him doing like the each week dropping a new artist as project with seven songs? I think songs. that's dope, but I think that... A lot of them had issues with that mm-hmm. process. So what that tells you is that he didn't take his time. He just rushed it um, and did what he wanted to do on his own time. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, that musical ear that he has is still phenomenal because a lot of those projects was great. They were- seven, seven songs. It was cool. It was, it was great for what it was. I think yeah, I think he fucked up. How um, much her name? Tiana. He fucked up Tiana badly. Absolutely, she got it the hardest. But she, the music, those seven songs were phenomenal, though. You, yeah, it's funny because when she dropped those projects, everybody was comparing. Yo, but these are not like the snippets you did on Instagram. Because it was different, and it, yeah. and it wasn't it wasn't right. So it's yeah. like what he did was that could have been iconic. That could have been it. Could have everything been a, that he wanted it to be if he would have just. Took plan, his time, it planned, it, planned out. it out more. Let them have what they wanted to do. Yeah, if you like, say like you're planning for like a year ahead. Yeah, just did it because the, the energy time. around it would have been different. Yeah, it would have been better if you just like didn't even announce anything. Just a bam, 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 yeah. bam, bam, bam. Like, I want to say, what's that kind? My favorite Kanye beat of all time is that uh, damn was it Devil in the New Dress with Rick Rose, Rick Ross, with the guitar solo at the end. What song? Devil in the New Dress. Devil in the New Dress. 
It says the soul sample when the guitar mm-hmm. solo at the end. And yeah. Ross on it. That's your favorite intro- beat instrumental? Kanye beat ever. Okay. I don't think it's a Kanye beat. I think somebody else did it, but mm-hmm. one of my favorite Kanye West songs. Okay. I can see that. I, I can see that for that you. Shit, that shit that's your fire. energy. Yeah, I can see that. Energy. I can see that. I can see yeah, that. That shit is like. I can see I said that. it just gets you in your bag. You mm-hmm. just want to like. Yeah. Yeah. Go to Shorty's house and let her <laughs> and let her know. Let her know her about herself. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, that's what we doing. Yeah. That's what we doing. Okay. So now, so what are you gonna do after the project comes out? How are you gonna momentum promote it? So that's the real game right there. So the new the new project. I'm gonna I'm gonna say what the name is. It's um. This one is gonna be the boy next door, so it's a lot more intimate. What's the name of the? The first one is the new boy in town. This is the boy, and this is the boy next door. The new boy in town, the boy next door. So the new boy in town, he moved in. Okay. Now he's the boy next door. So this one is a lot more intimate. Um, it's more storytelling as mm. far as um, the content. Yeah. That I'm approaching. Um, yeah, yeah. You, gotta, you gotta definitely uh, use the pictures that we just took. No, de- that, no, yeah, definitely, yeah. that definitely. That's why the fit, whole fit intimate, so well. yeah, yeah, in the, the house, with intimate the t- with the table, definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. Hopefully, I can get those edits nice for you, nice yeah, and crisp. Nice and um, crisp. But yeah, it's um the the boy next door. It's a lot more intimate. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot more personal. Yeah, as far as things that I've gone through and um things that I just haven't spoken about. So. With that whole rollout, it's gonna be a lot different than you know the whole release, the huge release party that I did and all that type of stuff. I really want to just get like people close to me, uh, friends and family, come to a studio and mm. just play. play the body of work and talk about the records and really go in depth of you know what it means and what I was feeling and you know why certain things were important to say. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty much how I want to roll that out. Um, and I just started a um, YouTube vlog. So it's Toddy's time. Mm-hmm. Um, so we just released episode one. And so I'm going to, I want to film that and, you know, everything like that and just roll it out like, that are, way. Are you going to be vlogging daily or is it just for the project? Not daily, just, you know, things that I do, um, going to the studio. You can put your music videos there? Doing, absolutely. Um, filming music videos. Going to the studio, doing you know interviews, um, uh, pictures, and you know photo shoots and all that type of stuff. So it's really vlogging the experience, the whole experience of of Tati and like how that artistry comes together, how everything comes together. Mm, that's really dope. What do you think about everything that's going on currently right now, like in the world or in the like wor- music? Which mean in the, well in the world pro- post pandemic. Are we post pandemic though? That's, a that's good the question. that's the question. According to according to the news, well, I don't even I don't even know. The, the, the I mean, the, the world is. I mean, everything is opening. Like everything, the world o- is opening back up. Well, so because you can sort of say post pandemic. <laughs> it's because they, they realize they can't keep giving us stimulus checks. Oh, they absolutely don't want to do that. <laughs> they were like, you they know what? They don't want to do that. People not even trying to go back to work. So yep. they not they not going to do that no more. No. It's really crazy where everything is going. Boy, with the, the whole um, variant strains and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. But how do I feel about it? Yeah. I think that as an adult, like as an individual, you should do whatever you choose to do, but you should be smart about it and also not be a dick about it. Meaning like if you go into... You can't get upset if somebody tells you that their establishment requires a mask and yeah. you don't want to wear it. Yeah, just don't go to the establishment. Don't you don't go into that establishment. You could do whatever you want to do, but don't surround yourself with other people who are okay. you know, following those rules. At the end of the day, I'm someone like I'm vaccinated, right? Okay, I was just gonna now, ask I'm you, a dude. Are you pro? So I'm outside. outside. But with the henny? But I'm with the henny is or the douce. Or the douce. Or, or the douce. Or Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe both. But I just feel like okay, I'm vaccinated. But does that mean that like I can never get COVID again? Absolutely not. Um, so I'm still wearing masks, you know, on the train or you know different places. But just be smart about what you're doing. It's so funny because a lot of that stuff, when you really think about it, it's like actually good health things to do. Mm-hmm. When you're on a train, I think it's a good idea to wear masks. Mm-hmm. 
You know, we should have been wearing masks be on the train that. 40 years ago. Yeah. We should have been wearing like, 50 hand years sanitizer. ago, 60. It's funny when like COVID started and it was like people. So this is how you clean wash up, your hands. Clean up. Right. Like, wait, we were, we're all doing 30, this? 30 seconds, 45 seconds. Like, nah, yeah, y'all yeah. should have been washing yeah, your yeah, hands. I don't be. know what y'all what? talking about. And it's, everybody says like, yo, I don't know nobody that got to cold during that time. Everybody y'all was, wasn't washing your hands. Be, there y'all were not washing your hands. You go to the bathroom, take a twinkle, then right out to cook your hot dog. Which is crazy. Like you have to tell people how to be hygienic and and take care of themselves. People are lazy and dirty and dirty. Yeah. So I mean, but the, you know, depending on the situation, that could be a plus. Well, that's hey. di- that's different. That's, <laughs> that's different. very different, right? That's different. All right, let me just keep asking you a bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cosby, Bill, America's dad, Mr. Ugly Sweater himself. Ooh, out what from a, the jail. What, but what a, what about it? Let's start with the most recent thing. Mm-hmm. What are your opinions on him being released from jail? I do not think that he should be that he should have been. Released. Released. You think he shouldn't be released? I don't think that he should have been released. Based on the reason they said he was released? No, no, no. Mm-mm. I, he was released for what they called, what, a technicality? I, I, I don't even like saying it's a technicality because if they said that the prosecutor told him, if you confessed, you will not go to jail... In my opinion, that's not a technicality. Mm-hmm. He should have mm-hmm. never been to jail. Regardless, but they say that. How? But how many people do you think realistically they say that to? A lot of people. That's why the jail, criminal jail system is fucked up. Right. But so if that was said, he's not a good and, but they could, but they could also prove that the yeah. judge said that, right? So most people who get told that can't prove that. That was just that was on some sh- shit like. I think they can't prove it because they don't got the lawyers. That's that's true. So based on why he was released, yes, he should be released because he had the good lawyers that could prove off of that technicality. That's what happened, yeah. or that's what was said, mm-hmm. and so he's out. Yeah, he outside just like the rest of us. He's like, Yo, but he put a caption that was man funny for his birthday. <laughs> oh, was, I don't follow him. So it was I, I didn't see no. I didn't like, see no caption. I'm out. Thank you, celebrating. You know, I, my birthday, such and such. You know, I want to go to beautiful women out there. He, some shit like he that. He think the beautiful. He think women. he think women for sure. Oh, it, it was spite. It was it, it was petty one hundred one. I don't f- not petty. He's too old to be petty. I don't oh, I don't follow. No, he's a com- he, No, he's a comedian. No, I, yeah. I I don't put that past him. But back to the question though, I think based on how he got out and why he got out, he should be out yeah. because he had the lawyers to prove that. Based on the situation. As to why he's even in the situ- why he was even in that situation, you know, hell nah, he shouldn't be out. He should be out. He shouldn't be out. No, absolutely not. I don't know how I feel about it because I ask, is what what is the evidence against it besides people saying? Like, do people have recordings of see we was in a bar right here and then by it doesn't even have to be like that, I mean like that's dropping the medicine just like oh you see him leaving the hotel room then. 20 minutes later, you see her leaving the hotel room a little bit in slight days, walking a little funny. Like, what is the evidence besides? Uh, I asked this just because a large amount of people say something happened, does that necessarily mean it happened? Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely not. I think that we live in a time where the allegation is concrete. Yes. Um, and I think. Because it happened, these allegations were so long ago yeah. that there's no way to prove it beyond... He say? Yeah. And I, so I think... What do you think of that? What do you think about, um, like, be like 20 years and they just come out saying what happened? Like 20, 30, 40 years plus. I don't, it hasn't been, I don't think it's been 40. Is it been 40? I don't think... I don't, know, I don't know if it's been 40, but I know it was definitely yeah. like 30. 30 years, 20 I feel like plus it was 30, like 30 years. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know. A part of me feels like if it happened, like and I'm not just saying if like to question anybody's story, but I'm saying let's if this is true, it doesn't matter when they come out. Yeah. Truthfully. Um, I feel like the longer that it 
takes for it to come out. Like you think thirty years from now, it's like who's gonna believe that? So so it's like I don't think it should matter. Really? I don't think it, I don't think it should matter. I feel like if it if it happened, um, thirty years memories get foggy. Memories get foggy. However, your truth is your truth. Like my memory may be foggy from ten years ago, but. If something happened to me, I'm going to be able to say that happened to me regardless. This conversation I'm having, just to clarify, is not negating what the women said. Oh, absolutely not. This, this absolutely is 100% not. I'm devil's advocate. I just got to make sure of that. So, perfect. I'm going to give you an example. I used to talk with my friend, right? And I tell him, like, the same story about how this, I don't know, I got into a fight with this person. He did mm-hmm. this, I did that. I tell him a story, right? I told him a story the third time. Yo, this and that. He, you know what he told me? He goes like, yeah, I remember. I was there. I'm like, I didn't know you when this happened. No, I was there. I told him the story. So I told him the story so many times that he, he, he said thought he was, he was there. there. <laughs> yeah, that's your man's right there. We got into a little argument I'm about weak. the whole situation. I forgot exactly what the story is, but I kept saying the story. I'll say it, like, I'll say it then a couple of months later. I'll then re-say it. Then a couple of months later, mm-hmm. and I'll re-say it. It got up to the point. He looked at me like, yeah, I, re- I know. I was there. I'm like, no, nigga, you wasn't. Got mm-hmm. a whole big argument. That's why I say memory is kind of funny. That's but that to that point though it, that is also true. So I feel like for for the people who are rooting for Cosby, we mean I don't, rooting rooting for him like to, like on like free free Bill Cosby like you okay. know all the, like all of those mm-hmm. people like those supporters people who are still supporting him. Yeah, I don't. In that situation, I'm not necessarily hating them or like feel any way towards them because at the end of the day it was these things are so long ago that there isn't a physical way for them to prove that he did anything Mm -hmm. so it's like you can have your personal opinion as an individual but like what are like what are we gonna do about that? Like, what we are we expecting? Like yeah. people who he's he's close with, like people were coming down on um, Felicia Rashad, yeah, for saying um, she, for what she said, she um, for happy. what she tweeted, yeah, she was you know saying that justice was you know served. corrected and served. Um, she wrote that on Twitter, and people you know were upset about that, and it's just like. That's somebody who he's been yeah close to for. However long, and it's like, what is what is his closest people? People like, what are they supposed to do about that? Like, hold him accountable, definitely. But like, what are they really supposed to do about it? I just know for a fact something happened. What it was, I know. agree with that too. Something, I definitely think something happened. I, I definitely think Bill Cosby did some foul shit. Mm-hmm, definitely, one hundred percent. Could be that the women were with it. Some of them weren't with it. Could be that somebody, Bill, was currently doing something that people didn't really fuck with. And then, you know what, man? You did this 20 years ago. Fuck you. Mm-hmm. But something did happen. Mm-hmm. Definitely. There's we, also something to be said about the fact that there were, there were, you know, whispers and, you know, talks about it. For years. For years. So it's, it's definitely something that was what? known. And what's, what is, what's that comedian? That's a comedian that... That was just hard on the Bill Cosby mm-hmm. pill jokes. Mm-hmm. I think it's Raleigh, something like that. A L mm-hmm. hard on it. Yeah, for years on it. I think yeah. he told a joke about like Bill Cosby coming up to him saying, "I don't like the fact that he curses." He goes like, "I don't like the f- fact that you fucking drug women." Yeah, it's just like maybe like five years before all this shit happened. Mm-hmm. But continue. No, on. I no to that point. I agree. I feel like there's something to be said about that. Um, so again. Like we've already, you know, stated, like we definitely are not saying that he's innocent. Like he definitely did something. There's something foul. Um, many probably many of things foul. Um, but you know the whole release thing. I just feel like it's, it's funny too, because every attempt of him trying to get out of jail that was publicized. Oh, he, Bill Cosby doing another appeal. Bill, Co- Bill Cosby trying to get out because of COVID. Then boom, he gets out, and the reason. But like this is the first we hear about it. 
The first we hear about is when he gets out, but every other t- attempt at him trying to get out, we heard it before. Okay, he's going to do another appeal. can do another appeal. Oh, he's going to try to get out because of COVID. Or he got denied. Got mm-hmm. this. And then you wake up one day, Bill Cosby's free. I'm like, what the fuck did this happen? Mm-hmm. He publicized every single one of his moves. Mm-hmm. So. Sketchy. It's sketchy. It's very sketchy. Definitely sketchy. Anything else on your mind before you want to wrap? I'll wrap it up? Nah, just stay tuned for um, The Boy Next Door coming in August. Uh, that's really it. You have any other questions for Tati? I'm good for now. I'm good for now. When you come back. Heard it. Heard it. Heard it. When the, when the EP drop, you know. When, you, when the EP drops, you get real we intimate. Back. Yeah. When we listen to it. Unlearn yeah. stuff. Did come you listen back. to the um, the new boy? I listened to it for like first time straight through here today, but I gotta re-listen to it before I, I play the mm-hmm. we do the next one. Yeah, you so, definitely gotta listen yeah. to. From what I, I like a lot, I was, I was liking mm-hmm. a lot of the joints. You Thank can, you. You can, you, can, you, can, you can hear some notes from. from, from I'm from weak. I it's actually it it's actually so. What's so funny is that it's actually a lot more singing on the, the, um, the new boy, the new one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot more singing on and the, the new boy. You, that's the one you're singing the most, right? Because that's no, what I heard. The the new boy, I'm singing the title more. Track. So so far, yes. But the boy next door is definitely more. Like it's more way, it's, it's more like full songs. Like you're trying to get your yeah. drink back. A little bit, you know. Yeah, it's more to, intimate, so you know yeah. I had to, you know, slow it down and Damn, and really, you it's, know, it's, say some shit. If I knew you were trying, I should have put the candle when you're doing nah. the picture. <laughs> the candle in the background, yeah, got the candle in the background, yeah, 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 yeah. But you just had the, all the bokeh, like the round candles. Nah, dead ass. You looking down, sad. <laughs> ah, damn. I wonder what he's doing right now. Candles would have been fire for the cover. Oh yeah, but I have. Oh. I don't want the place to burn down. But it wouldn't. Hey, Amen. <laughs> it, it, it you said how I fell a couple of times. <laughs> it wouldn't. <laughs> it wouldn't burn down. <laughs> it, it I don't have rental insurance. Well, New York. Yeah, that's New York for you, bro. My agent was like, "When I got the place, he's like, yeah, you you want to get rental insurance? How much is that?'" I'm like, "Nah, I'm good. I'm good." <laughs> it's like when you buy something from Amazon. Hey, you want to get the insurance? Skip, skip. That's more money. Skip. Yeah, <laughs> I'm man. gonna take my chances. <laughs> buy something for two hundred. Insurance fifty dollars. Skip. I'm weak. All right, let's wrap it up. You want to? You want? Do you want to freestyle? Want to sing something for the people? You want what? me to do what? Yeah, is that, is that too Actually, much? Actually, um, hey, does it have to be something off, off the dome? Um, let me see. No, I, I just did, I just did this verse. Actually, I just did a feature. I'm, gonna I'm actually a little lit. Um, already. I've been drinking since you get, since you brought wow. out the bottle. Wow. Okay. <laughs> soft. Wait, um, soft. Wait, actually, I'm not getting advertised for this, so I gotta cover up the. There you go. So you can't tell. Jesus. Um, no free sponsors. No. Let me see if I remember something. Uh, the new boy turned into the boy next door. Now the niggas wanna bang because they know. I actually don't remember the verse. Oh, actually. The new boy turned into the boy next door. Now the neighbors but banging shit. I turn them to whores. Because now they want this work since I got hot. And I tell them when they service and don't miss a spot. Yeah, party going up every day of the week. Shake ass, you throw it. Bring up the freak. Real life lit nigga, fuck your tweets. Dreams and nightmares, quoting meek. We got the hookah. We got the bottles. Hella niggas. Hella models. Uh, More money. Less problems. problems. Yeah, we started from the bottom. Bottom, All of bottom. my niggas be storming in. Oh. Sell we outside, so we showing skin. Oh. Drip from the head down to the shin. Ay. More life is a movie ticket on the chin. I don't know. Chin. That was some like actually that was something um from the first single from the EP. Uh Summer 21. It's upbeat outside type of shit. Outside. Or some summer. And you shit. dropped it when? I didn't drop it yet. Oh, you didn't drop to, it. This is for the new song, new thing. This is a new, new, new. New, 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 new. You want me to do something from the, nah, nah, the new boy? It's good. It's good that you did something new, new. Because it's about, you about to do something new, new. Yeah. All right, yeah. Let's, all right. It was good talking to you beautiful people. Even though I don't like some of y'all, but. I'm weak. <laughs> it's Toddy. It's music. We out. Bye.